When the pandemic first hit last year and we went into lockdown, Major League Baseball would shut down too. Along with the unknowns of what would happen to our families and our jobs, we also weren't sure whether there would be baseball. While the MLB was figuring out potential safety protocols and how to use this crisis as an excuse to exert leverage over the players union, I and so many other baseball fans found refuge in watching the KBO or the Korean Baseball Organization. With Korea's smart and effective pandemic response and the common sense response that having a baseball season was better for the health of the game long term than the short term profits of not playing, they started their season in short order. Even though the broadcasts were only available in a language that I don't speak, and they required me to get up at 5.30 a.m., I started to really enjoy the games on their own merit, and not just as a substitute for the MLB. Baseball has been around in Korea as early as 1896, and would continue to grow under the period of Japanese rule, as the sport was already huge in Japan. It wasn't until after the Korean War, though, that a professional domestic league, the KBO, was formed in 1982. That league is still going strong and features 10 teams, three of which are in the capital of Seoul. While it's not at the skill level of Major League Baseball or Nippon Professional Baseball, baseball is incredibly popular in Korea. Before the pandemic, fans would pack the stands to cheer for their teams with a wide selection of songs for their teams and players. Now Japanese fans may also sing at games, but those are highly coordinated and structured in comparison to Korean baseball singers, which have much more in common with raucous European football chants. This is what I think made the KBO so unique, is that it was so much fun. That atmosphere did not diminish even without the fans in the stands. Mascots would still do their routines, often wearing face masks, and teams like the Hanwha Eagles even pack their stands with stuffed animals. The product on the field also has a certain amount of lightheartedness. Korean players popularized the celebratory backflip long before Jose Batista perfected the art form in 2015. The games were often high scoring and ones that you knew that anything could happen. MLB baseball is back in full force now and the KBO has fans in the stands again. But I can't emphasize how important being able to watch Korean baseball was for me in those early days of lockdown. When I couldn't go to work and wasn't able to go to games, getting up in the morning to watch the KBO game gave me something to look forward to when the future was so uncertain. Even now that the MLB is back, I will often get up early to cheer on the Kiwoom heroes. There have not been many positives to this pandemic. But for me, discovering Korean baseball is absolutely one of them. While I won't be able to travel to Korea for a game anytime soon, I can at least try and recreate the experience at home. Food is also a huge part of going to a game in Korea, and far and away, the most popular ballpark food is Korean fried chicken. It's famous for its uniquely crispy texture, and the way we achieve that is by dredging in potato starch. Measure out one cup potato starch, two teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon black pepper. Add your chicken to the dredge and mix to thoroughly coat the chicken. Wings are the most common for Korean fried chicken, but any bone-in, skin-on dark meat is a great candidate. Here, I'm using two pounds of chicken thighs. There are many different fried chicken sauces in Korea, but this one is the classic gochujang-based sauce that most people know and love. Start by mincing up three cloves of garlic and one inch of ginger. In a mixing bowl, combine one quarter cup gochujang, one third cup ketchup, one third cup honey, and two teaspoon of vinegar. Saute the garlic and ginger in a pot and add the rest of the ingredients. Simmer it all for just five minutes and then let it cool. To start frying our chicken, Fill up a heavy bottom pot or wok halfway up with a neutral oil and bring the temperature up to 350 degrees. Add the chicken and cook for 12 minutes, flipping it frequently. Next, remove the chicken from the oil onto a paper towel lined baking sheet and let it rest. Your chicken should look a little something like this after our first fry. If you really want your chicken extra crispy, don't forget to do the magic fingers over top of it like I do here. 
One of the signatures of Korean fried chicken is that it's double fried. For our second fry, increase the temperature to 375 degrees and fry for another 12 to 14 minutes or more until it's perfectly golden brown and crispy. Transfer the chicken to a large mixing bowl and toss with your sauce until it's saucy and coated. Add in some sesame seeds, toss one more time, and then transfer to a serving plate. Top with some more sesame seeds and some thinly sliced green onions. Without a doubt, this is my favorite version of fried chicken, and I can honestly say it turned out better than most restaurants. So turn on the KBO game, take a bite of that delicious chicken, and enjoy the game. Let's go! 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 Let's go!